Dear ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, Thorsten Hülsmann. I'm the CEO of Digital Hub Logistics in Dortmund, Germany. I welcome you warmly to this today live session on first and last mile agriculture logistics challenges in Africa. This webinar is uh, organized and uh, produced in the frame of the Digilogic project, a Horizon 2020 project funded by the European Commission. And I'm very honored to have three panelists today with me. And uh, yeah, in the next minutes, I want to ask uh, these panelists um, to introduce themselves. We have here Emma Otundo, um, team leader for the NICOP project from Nigeria. We have uh, Juha Kunas, chairman of Akava Technologies from Finland. And we have Tommaso Ciccarelli from University of Wageningen in the Netherlands. So I would ask uh, first Emma Otundo. Uh, Anna, Emma, please, could you introduce yourself briefly and also give us a little bit of, of a background um, for your responsibility and your project? Under GIZ Sedin project, and it is co financed by the European Union and the BMZ. So, NICO as a project is designed to support three agricultural value chains, namely tomato, chili, and ginger. But we also work in two non agricultural value chains, that is, leather and garments in Nigeria, to promote structural transformation, overcome coordination challenges and linkage failures to improve access to local, regional, and international markets. Now, as we are doing this, we also take into consideration social and environmental concerns. And in my role as a team leader of the technical pillar of NICOP, NICOP has three pillars. We have access to finance pillar, we have um, policy pillar, and then we have the technical pillar, and that is where I lead. Um, I am responsible for designing strategies, overseeing implementation to address constraints in productivity, entrepreneurship, and access to markets. And in my role, I have over 10 years experience in private sector development in the agricultural space. And I have served in various capacities in development programs, both in East and West Africa. That is my introduction, thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thank you for sharing this with us, for this introduction. And we are moving uh, to Juha. Juha Kanas from Finland. Juha, please uh, introduce yourself and your organization. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Juha Kunas and uh, worked in, uh, in Wakaba in, in Africa, especially Eastern and East South Africa for, to develop uh, cold chain solutions and especially to deliver agri products from uh, producers to the market or, or storage. And uh, it's, it has been very, very, uh, uh, let's say, interesting but challenging, challenging area. And, uh, but there is a big opportunity and I see it's very important when we look at the future of Africa, especially because the agri Business is important part of the economy. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Juha, for this uh, introduction. And also thank you that you join us today. Um, finally, we have uh, Tommaso Ceccarelli. Um, Tommaso, please uh, introduce yes. you and thank your you, project. Thorsten. Thank you, Thorsten. So I am a, a senior researcher at Wageningen Environmental Research, which is part of Wageningen University and Research. And I, uh, I'm Italian, but, but, but based in the Netherlands, of course, I have 30 years more, unfortunately, I would say. <laughs> this tells something about my age of professional and, and research experience in digitalization for agriculture in uh, low and middle income countries, but also in Europe. Uh, now I'm working on a project which is called the Digital Agri Hub, funded by Gates Foundation, uh, UK Aid. And agro ecosystem support. So this digital agri-hub starts from work done in the past from the CTA, another center based in Wageningen, who published a very, very interesting and important uh, publication on digitalization 
for, ag uh, for Agriculture in Africa report and tries to uh, make it live through dashboards, databases, uh, support to networks and uh, communities of practices, uh, matching between solution providers and investors, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's really in a, in a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tommaso, for this introduction and for being with us uh, today. So let us uh, move to the topic itself, to logistics challenge, uh, challenges in Africa. And I would uh, ask Emma, um, also due to your work and to your, due to your background, um, what, in your opinion, are the specific challenges for agricultural logistics in Africa, according to your, to your experience, Emma? Could you maybe share some insights with us? Oh, sure. Um, I will mention a few uh, based on the experience that I've had in the agricultural uh, space where I have worked. If you look at Africa in general, the role of infrastructure cannot be understood. And um, most of the farming communities in Africa tend to be in the very rural areas. So poor infrastructure is one of the greatest challenges for agricultural logistics in Africa. And you find that, you know, in, in some places, even access to roads um, or, or, or um, is, is a bit of a challenge. So reaching out to the uh, farming communities, reach out, reaching out to the agricultural communities become a bit of a problem. Then we also have the challenge of the nature of the agricultural produce. Some of the agricultural produce are very bulky. And if you look at the fact that there is also very little value addition, especially in the agricultural uh, landscape from the farm gate, this also makes logistics a bit of a challenge because take, for example, um, a commodity like uh, watermelon, you know, many African uh, areas where you find such crops being produced, you, you sometimes find it is piled by the roadside and because of its bulkiness, even the nature of vehicles that need to transport it have to be defined in a certain way. And that also um, kind of uh, makes, contributes into the challenge of uh, logistics. And that is just an example. Then we also have the seasonality in terms of production. Sometimes the agricultural communities cannot be able to access all year production. So if you're looking at um, uh, transportation or logistics from a business perspective, then you almost have to wear the hat of, you know, it is going to be a seasonal business and you have to figure out what else is going to be done to your business when the productivity is not uh, taking place. So that also, again, sometimes brings challenges because when you are getting into uh, a business space, you would want to plan for like um, a year round. Uh, kind of business or you'd want to plan your business to run year round. But the fact that this is, uh, the, the production is, seasonal, is, is seasonal becomes a bit of a challenge. Then we also have the pro, uh, producer organization and aggregation challenges. Sometimes you come across farming communities where farmers are not organized anyway. And so when you want to aggregate their products, you almost have to think about how you are going to organize these farmers, how you're going to organize aggregation points for you know, easy transportation, how you're going to organize. You know, so you almost have to think beyond the normal business thought that you may have. You have to think about all the details right from how you're going to make the collection from the farm gate into um, uh, areas where you can be able to easily access services. And if you're thinking about processing, if you're thinking about transportation, then it even goes beyond um, some of this. So that is uh, what I would want to say for now, but I would want to open it to also other people um, for their uh, experiences that they've had. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you, Emma, uh, for this comprehensive overview and also this tangible um, uh, explanation. Maybe um, you are, uh, for you, keeping this um, overview of Emma in mind and also your own um, experience, what would you say um, could be the role of digital technologies in this um, framework? Uh, maybe you could add some of your own experience uh, talking or keeping this in mind. I think that it's when we talk about uh, uh, foundation, when we 
it, this is not rocket science, but it's, uh, it's something that we have to understand how we enable those things. And good thing in Africa is that the mobile phone, uh, smartphone penetration is uh, quite high. Access is uh, mostly good at least urban area. I have faced challenges in Lake Victoria and Sheta in rural areas, but it's things are developing. Uh, I see that uh, when we have uh, tools to communicate, to transfer data, so first thing is that we have to enable those uh, things there. And uh, when we talk about digital uh, services, what we have added, actually, we, we, we have those uh, cool boxes or solar cold storages that have uh, IoT technology there. There is the cloud service that is actually getting that data. So data is there. And what is important is that data is available for different stakeholders in the process. So actually I was surprised how well it was adapted and the data was utilized for other use cases because traditional use cases that you, when you are harvesting, you need to actually, you need to deliver it uh, either to storage or to the market uh, following, uh, when we talk about perishable food, following uh, right kind of um, uh, procedure. So uh, for me, I see that uh, transparency, the data enable trust. So when we are using uh, those tools, we are having data, data is available also those stakeholders that are involved in, uh, let's say, the core processes, but also as me as consumer, it gives opportunity for me to see that those things has been done right, uh, correct way. And uh, but the problem is 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 of course it's uh, technology. There is the cost element and uh, asset. Uh, you need to have money, and the cost of the money. It's available, but cost of the money is uh, in Africa, unfortunately, very high. It's 20, some quite often 20, 25% interest rate. Uh, so to invest different kind of things is, is, is challenging. And, and I see that it's one obstacle when we talk about technology enable, but if you are not capable to buy or acquire those uh, tools, but what I see in that when we talk about this holistic thing, so technology, will enable when we talk about capacity building to make it happen so there is lack of knowledge. So that's important is that we have uh, those online tools, we have collaborative tools, what we have, uh, have done. So I, I, I have learned it, of course, on-site things. So what I have learned is that when you actually have dialogue when those users you are learning from them even you are bringing the technology so embedding technology to part of the next generation processes and so on it's um, the challenge is that you have to think 360 so uh, but but as you said in emma it's uh, it's um, there is the promising it's promising i have seen success i have seen great people adapting technology but we need to understand those fundamental things like capacity building tools uh, funding for tools and and cooperate collaboration those technology that enable communication okay thank you you have for this for this uh, relation and also for for scoping and uh, um, talking about your experience um, on this i think we also should keep this topic of data in our mind to um talk on it uh, later on in this in this uh, session but first i want to um, ask uh, tomaso before later you could maybe also um, come to the role of your dg agri hub maybe on the topic itself the challenges for agricultural logistics in africa um, what is your comment on the explanation and the background which emma just gave to us um, maybe just uh, feel free to to comment on it or share some experience on this uh, specific um, challenges for logistics in agriculture i think uh, emma captured uh, very well uh, she's probably much more knowledgeable than me on the specific domain 
uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, all the elements uh, of of the enabling infrastructures are are absolutely key. And, and uh, as she was mentioning, it, it, these ranges from you know physical infrastructure, uh, cold chains, transport, etc., to ICT, internet penetration, and the middleware, as we call it sometimes. I mean, sometimes. So the, the I mean, the, the, the ba basic digital skills, uh, organization, uh, re regulatory framework. The, the, these are all crucially important. So that's that's uh, if you wanted me to to yeah as you as you said you wanted me to say something on on what the the points uh, Emma were making it, it, shall I say also something about the hub uh, or yes please Peter? please go ahead go ahead okay so because the hubs yeah I see I mean th there is a bit of uh, maybe confusion or uh, the, the terms is used interchangeably so you but basically there are two big families of of hubs that i see eh? maybe you you not necessarily agree and some of them are knowledge brokers some of them are even marketplaces so the digital agri hub is really a knowledge broker it's not it's not a marketplace and in that respect the key things are you know the reasons behind it are to reduce uh, a sense of fragmentation there is a lot happening it's it's Volcanic, it's tumultuous the, the process which is happening with digitalization, but it's fragmented. So many stakeholders from donors to government are saying, well, is there, it doesn't have to be one place, but there are some places which are possibly talking to each other and are federating this information so that we can have you know, a quality, uh, a, a sense of quality and trustworthiness behind these initiatives. And, and uh, so it's it's about putting together the information, exchanging them for the different purposes. Two is to also facilitate a kind of, as I was saying before, a kind of independent assessment for, you know, many stakeholders. I mean, again, could be donors, investors, uh, farmers association, industry, uh, whatever. Uh, but is there a place who can guarantee a bit of, uh, you know, of, of uh, independent and fair assessment on, on the quality of these solutions? And when you eventually get to that, it's about making this information available for the same stakeholders, so for investors to invest, for a uh, farmers association to, to, to find the most adaptive solution for their own environment, for but also to, to do matchmaking between these different stakeholders because startups may need investments, ag tech may need you know, other actors in the value chain to make it whole value chain solution. So yeah, and last but not least, what also what uh, Juha was saying. So it's not just about the solution itself, it's really what, what goes around with it. So networks, awareness, we are finding that there is such a poor awareness on what the digital solutions are supply chain solution but okay in general uh and so there is a lot of work to be done in terms of awareness with decision makers but and then capacity building also perfect thank you uh, tomaso and maybe let's let's uh try to ask emma um on this scheme which you just figured uh, a hub as a kind of knowledge broker and also um, um, a transfer agent maybe from um, stakeholder to stakeholder or from from actor to actor emma uh, i would i wanted to like like to ask you what are your experiences in in nigeria um, uh, do you observe that um, that uh, companies in the logistics value chain in agriculture are actively cooperating with um, um, such organizations, which are maybe within a hub or with uh, a university or with another other organizations, what is your experience uh, on this? Um, I would want to say that, um, let me just point out that I don't have a lot of experience, but I know that there are quite a number of hubs that are coming up that are trying um, different initiatives around um, you know, digitalization and the likes. But like the other panelists have uh, mentioned, I think the issue of knowledge is, is something that really needs to be factored in. Because in as much as, yes, we could have landscape where there are uh, you know, um, uh, mobile network penetration, but if you look at the level of knowledge, especially amongst producers, who are 
the backbone for in any agricultural uh, produce. I think that is something that we building around available solutions, especially in Now, the issue of data, as you had mentioned, is, is something that we can't labor. And this data starts right from farm sizes to, you know, uh, 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 how do you call it, to uh, yields that, that, that comes from, from the farmers to, you know, the producer organizations, how many of them are there? What really is, is, is their value proposition? If you look at them in terms of, you know, um, uh, self-organization. So all that also needs to be factored when you're thinking about um, digital uh, digitalization in, in the agricultural landscape. Then we also um, have to think about, you know, inventory management. Those, those are some of the things that also come into mind when you're thinking about digitalization. And when you're even looking at it in terms of, you know, um, leveraging on any digital technology to improve processes. We have to think about inventory management. We, want, we have to think about farm data management. We have to also think about you know, the producer organizations and even the off-takers and the end market in general. Okay, and um, maybe um, I want to add another question because you, but also you and Tomaso mentioned that the topic of skills and the uptake uh, and capacity building on, on um, technologies, maybe digital technologies to improve logistics processes and, and supply chain management is an important asset. What is in your project or in, in Nigeria as such, if you have experience, um, how is this um, be coordinated? Is this, are there different organizations in place and projects which are tackling uh, this issue? Or, or do you think there's definitely uh, a, a lot more to do? And, and uh, I, I would be interested how the situation in your, in your um, region is. For me, if I want to take that question, I think the best approach would be the private sector development into that space, because then that has a much longer um, sustainability. And uh, um, it, it also has a very clear uh, commercial incentives for longer engagement with the actors. Now, what sometimes happens is that um, when development projects are in the mix and they pay for the space, they pay for the involvement, there is usually a gap sometimes when they leave, especially when sustainability is not considered right from the beginning. And you find that there are some scenarios where that have played in, but where you get that the private sector provide, uh, private sector actors that are providing digital solutions are included in engaging with the actors within the value chain, it is much more sustainable and it is much more fruitful than if it is otherwise done. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Very clear statement. Maybe also uh, bringing this uh, to you, to you, what is your um, opinion on this? And maybe also taking the existence or non-existence or experience of such transfer organizations in mind. Have you um, an, an opinion on this or have you experiences in, in such projects? Yeah, I have been many different kinds of projects and, and I think that my big query is sustainability. So we can, uh, as I said, that I always say that it should be healthy business. It should be healthy business when we do it, that it should, when we have projects that are funded by, uh, by different, uh, uh, different ways that it's not, uh, we are, so it's something that we will find out the way to stay alive and scale up though. So I think that that's uh, important. And I, as I said earlier, it's learning. It's also learning and finding when we have value, value chain, example, in our case, the value chain, uh, we need to do, uh, there are some kind of even process, technology enables certain process innovations and new kind of service jobs that are supporting the core value chain. So, 
So actually, if there are missing links, even if we don't get supporting value chain, that is example that we need to provide those, uh, cold, uh, I call it cooling blocks, to when someone is uh, harvesting and they need to deliver, they perhaps cannot have those cooling blocks themselves. So we need to provide those by another service provider because there is no business sense to everyone to buy example freezer so it's something that we have to go sometimes quite deeply deeply inside those uh, local processes but it's also what is good and people like what i have been in project that it's uh, it's engaging and enabling new kind of services and those people because africa is lack of jobs so i think that all ways that way will uh, actually bring value for economy but but the cooperation it's as i said it's uh, it's uh, it's never easy it's never easy we have different people different cultures and even we are learning so so uh are working together more and communicating more i think that what emma emma uh, said i think that she's we are technology is not such kind of um, alone miracle but when we are getting data data enable us that gives us opportunity to develop things yeah clear statement also from your side you are thank you for this and maybe um passing uh the floor to, to Tommaso also on this. Um, maybe you can also contribute to the discussion because I think that uh, in your role as a as, um, responsible person in DG AgriHub or as a researcher at Wageningen University, you might be also uh, involved in such uh, projects as a kind of knowledge broker, as a kind of uh, project lead. What are your experiences uh, which you might share here in this uh, discussion on this? Yeah, I only have choose among the different things that we have been uh, touching upon. Maybe uh, this aspect of the sustainability is, is so important. So one thing that we are noticing is that, uh, yeah, I mean, we all know there are different uh, stages in the life cycle of a service provider or a solution provider. And uh, there is a lot happening, a, a very dynamic landscape in Africa in terms of startups on digital solutions, but also on ag tech. Very, very incredibly dynamic. We are, we are noticing this uh, you know, through the digital AgriHub, how dynamic the, the landscape is. And, and, but of course, uh, uh, there is also a, the issue of moving away from uh, subsidized uh, services, uh, uh, grant-based, grant-dependent to uh, a healthy uh, business uh, perspective. Although we must say that in some countries, in some areas, because of the uh, weakness also of the social and, uh, and, and economic and security context, this is maybe a dream. So we have to be very careful about which, we, we cannot have a kind of idea that everything is the same in Africa. It's very, very different depending on the country. But if for now I, we leave away these difficult areas and we move areas to areas where business uh, opportunities are there, evidently there, it's interesting to see the struggle of, of, of many, many realities to move away from uh, subsidized services and move towards healthy businesses. And this uh, of course, is uh, is difficult. It's difficult. There is a kind of success rate which may be modest. Uh, it has to be supported in in a bal very balanced way. Uh, that's why, yeah. Also, as a, you know, the donor community has a big responsibility in helping this transition. Uh, but again, paying attention to the segments of the societies where. Uh, the market is, is, is weak, is, is, cannot operate uh, that much. So really, I mean, uh, operating in kind of Niger is a bit different than in Kenya and, and depending where you are in Kenya, value chain, et cetera, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tommaso. Um, this, uh, this brings me to, to, to another question. Um, I would be interested in it. Maybe I can ask uh, in first instance, Emma, uh, on, on uh, your 
experience on this. Um, so my observation in other live sessions was that the um, mixture and the cooperation of uh, companies in the logistics value chain um, is quite interesting to observe from very big logistics service providers and big, uh, um, I don't know, uh, manufacturing companies or producers, and then local ones in the different regions um, for fulfilling certain um, tasks and jobs in the logistics value chain. And I would be interested in, in the agricultural um, logistics chain when we are thinking about the first or the last mile. Emma, what is your observation? Uh, is this fragmented as usual in, uh, in logistics or do you see clear uh, and maybe dominating um, companies in the agricultural logistic chains who are, uh, well, operating um, all the different um, um, activities? What is, what is your uh, observation or your um, yeah, your, your uh, thoughts about this? Um, I would want to say that, um, of course, as you have rightly observed, um, the beauty and the importance of collaboration within uh, a space such as the digital space cannot be uh, underscored. And um, from my experience, I think we are yet to get to a level where we are talking of full cooperation there is still a lot of um, fragmentation in terms of the different solutions that people are trying to bring. Uh, many times when I have interacted with, um, you know, people who are offering solutions in the digital space, you find that there is um, a lot of, um, you know, um, the, the, there is very little collaboration and uh, sometimes there is a lot of duplication. You know, people are coming up with solutions that, somebody else has already also come up with and chances would have been much better if people would kind of, you know, cooperate and they are able to build on solutions that are already, uh, that have already been, been uh, develop, uh, developed. And I think th that is still kind of lacking. On the other hand, um, the other thing that I would also want to mention is that um, th there is still a lot of room for, um, testing of, of viable solutions and uh, refining some of these initiatives for wider community use. And that can only be achieved best when there, are, uh, when, when there is collaboration in the sector. So this is still um, a, a gap at the moment and um, there, there is a lot of room for improvement. And if there is, you know, a need for even coordination, even at the policy level, you know, if there could be some initi initiative that could be uh, put that would be able to bring like-minded actors together to start looking at it from a collaborative point of view. I think it would pro provide a great um, opportunity even for the beneficiaries uh, within the countries. That's what I would want to say. Thank you, Emma. Uh, maybe also, um asking uh, or, or moving uh, this topic to you, Juha, uh, what is your um, estimation um, on this? Is there a big difference from, from agricultural logistics change, especially when we are thinking about this first or last mile to other industries? Do you have an observation or maybe some experience to share with us? Currently, my experience, what I, those projects I have been involved, I think involved is there are, uh, of course, there are many, many different uh, areas and big, big players are always there. We have such, let's say that there are highways. There are highways, so things are, certain things are happening. But Africa is full of uh, what I have learned. And as, you, as we discussed, uh, Africa, we can say Africa, but it's many different countries, many different ways. They have many different maturities. But uh, principally, there are a lot of small scale and medium scale. Uh, farmers, when we talk about agri agriculture, aquaculture kind of things. And, uh, and when we look at those uh, first mile challenges, and also I think that best practices or good practices there, uh, also medium uh, mile or last mile uh, challenges, it's uh, the reality is that I think that uh, best if I'm looking at the future, there will be those, there should be those big players. 
that can do the certain mainstream, those big things. But we need to have uh, tools and, and, and uh, data and knowledge for the small and uh, small uh, scale business. And I, I say that technology will uh, is in uh, and will be in a key role. Uh, what actually uh, Tomaso said about those uh, those um, tackle those. Uh, those challenge, challenges, I, I, I believe at the same time I'm saying that the problem is uh, not, it's, this is not technology problem, technology is helping, but this is multidimensional uh, challenge. But as I said, it's uh, big ones will be there, there will be medium ones, smaller ones. If we can somehow I think that the challenge what I would like to see that, and I believe that is that we can get those good practices in place, uh, utilizing technology. So it's something that the value will be exponential when we have more people, more data, more co collaboration. And then uh, it's like in any market, uh, strong ones will win and uh, then they will scale up, they will be bigger ones. And it would be nice to see those local success stories uh, at a different uh, level. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Juha, for this for this uh, for this input. Make maybe then also asking again, Tommaso, and keeping one input which we just received from the audience uh, on the aggregators or the um, distributors which are using online. Um, tools. Uh, Tommaso, do you have any experience with such um, aggregators? Or maybe to also link uh, to the input of you and of Emma, um, what is your um, observation on the role of big players maybe in, in uh, the regions or the fragmentation of the logistics value chain? Maybe you can just uh, share some, some thoughts Yeah, one, one, well, I don't know if we, we are allowed to make names here of aggregators, are we? Uh, but anyway, yeah, why, why not? not? Okay, Olam, Olam is uh, adopting, uh, yeah, I don't know how to call them. The, the, these are, you know, uh, bundled solutions, are a whole chain, value chain solutions where they really Uh, incorporate uh, from advisory down to marketplace, online e-commerce for the yeah, European or Western or, or even Asian uh, market. Uh, uh, and in the, mid, in the middle of this, there is all a network of agents on the ground. Uh, so it's, it's really, there are really fascinating solutions. So I think that we can, can consider them as big players. There are many more. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it's in the past, we, I think, uh, especially Mercy Corps uh, uh, invented this term, in, term, the super platforms, huh? the super platforms, meaning the platforms which are integrating all this, uh, but are where you have a big player behind them. So e-commerce particularly uh, is, is very active. And, and there were some reflections from the CTA, for instance, in the report that I mentioned about, yeah, the, the, the need for these things to uh, collaborate with what they called differently blended product, which are connotated as being product locally very much grounded. So not the big players, the, the local players. Try to find a balance between the two, because if there, it's only in the hand of the big players, then The space for the local uh, version, uh, uh, national, you know, expressed by African uh, uh, entities will be downplayed. So this cannot happen. There has to be a collaboration. There has to be uh, the right way of balancing uh, the two uh, realities, I think. And, and the, 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 the local are, of course, much better placed, for instance, in... in you know, in, in tailoring the solution uh, uh, for their own uh, geographies and context and in institutional setups. The big players don't know enough to do this uh, well. Yeah, perfect. Thank, Thank you very much for this, this very uh, um, insight, uh, uh, very good insights and fruitful um, inputs. Uh, very uh, interesting and tangible uh, discussion from my point of view.
And uh, with this, I want uh, to come to an end, but um, I want to tackle one other issue. And uh, to tackle this issue of potential collaboration and potential um, initiatives who might be uh, working in the future together, I want to ask uh, um, uh, everyone just to imagine that uh, from now on, uh, the corona pandemic will stop and we'll be, we will be able tomorrow to um, uh, jump in the plane and uh, visit uh, each other. So Emma, um, what would be your destination? Um, where do you want to go um, in first instance? So who of us three do you want to meet and what would be the points of discussion um, for this uh, visit? That is interesting. Um, my first point of uh, destination would definitely be the Netherlands because there is a lot of interest that um, has been shown, especially for the work that we are doing in uh, Jinja. So there are quite a number of people there that are interested in um, you know, Jinja from Nigeria and, and I would really want to visit them. But again, looking from the perspective of uh, digitalization, I think it, it would be very important for us to start fostering cooperation amongst the actors. So in as much as there could be, um, you know, local solutions and big international players. So basically looking at, you know, how can we start fostering this cooperation, especially when you're looking at it from an export uh, perspective, information sharing in terms of you know the various market requirements and what the local actors need to do. I think that that, that would be my greatest um, interest. And then I would also want to link that to start also thinking about you know tailoring solutions to local actors, to local situations, to local geographies. So then by the end of the day, it is something that is, you know, it's 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 relevant and it's not a solution that you know once it has worked somewhere it can also be tailored locally. So that's the way I would look at my myself beyond Perfect. Corona. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. And also shifting the question to you, Ha. You are what we would what would be your first destination if you would uh, be able to jump in a plane tomorrow? So who of us would you visit? Yeah, I, I the place doesn't matter. I, I think that I can I hope we can meet and discuss and learn because as I see my, my dream is to scale up, to be part of that scaling up uh, good solution that, as I said, enable uh, econ uh, African economy because it's very much agri, agri business related. And I see logistics from many points of view is one of the key elements. So I would like to, perhaps I should jump. If, if Emma is going Netherlands, I will go as well and then we can. But I actually, I, I would like to go ground. I would like to go ground. I would like to meet people. And as I said, it's the scaling up is something that we need hands and legs and we need to share the knowledge. And as I said, those platforms, as, as uh, Thomas told, so I, I see that uh, communication, cooperation, collaboration, it's the key. And, and I, this is a long-term mission. We cannot, we will, we have to integrate different innovations. You know, there are innovations. Africa is full of innovations. So, but they are in Karas or some village. So we cannot. So that's why I see, see that uh, to get those good practices and and uh, to get together, to doing together. But I can. Uh, Netherlands is not bad. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, you are. And then to you, Tomaso. What what is missing on your? on your landscape of uh, potential collaboration partners or maybe of valuable input, it's, maybe you can find it in this round. What would be your destination? Yeah, first of all, so I'll have to wait for you and Emma to come to the Netherlands and host them properly. And you, Torsten and um, Margarita maybe. And then what about going to Emma's place? In, uh, just, I mean, I, after two years of digital, 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 to be honest, I feel I really need to go back to the field. And, uh, and to Nigeria or, or yeah, uh, the like. Uh, yeah, because it, as, as we were saying, it's nice all these uh, digital, digital, but the reality sometimes is not exactly coinciding with the picture, the digital picture we make of, of it. So 
better to we learn to be a bit more environmental sustainable so some traveling not much but some good traveling Perfect. in the right places <laughs> so thank you tomaso uh, really for this um, for this input and I'm, by the way uh, i would join you um, uh, because i also um, worked with uh, the collaboration partners in digilogic uh, throughout the last uh, 12 months only digitally and i never met Uh, our partner in Nigeria, which is Prototipi. So I think together with the colleagues from Prototipi, we could host um, uh, an event and invite everyone. And then it's also possible that Tomaso, you and Juha will meet with Emma in Nigeria and we can all together um, uh, speed up uh, the discussion. Um, so um, again, I want to thank you for this valuable inputs for this um, Uh, great uh, background um, insights on this topic of uh, logistics in agriculture, the challenges of first and last mile agricultural logistics in Africa. And uh, let me briefly point um, at the end of this uh, session to three um, topics the DigiLogic project is already facilitating or will um, soon facilitate. So there is the community platform of DigiLogic. So everyone who's interested, please visit the homepage of DigiLogic and uh, create an account in uh, the community um, space where you can find a valuable input on digitization, on digital innovation hubs, um, as well as on uh, smart logistics. Then second, I want to mention that we will soon Uh, and already working on a trend radar, which will give valuable insights in the topics of digital technologies uh, in smart logistics. And finally, uh, there will be also challenges uh, for innovators, which um, will be opened. And uh, the information for these challenges where um, individuals, but also companies can apply, um, will be available on the homepage and the communication channels of the DigiLogic project. I want to thank you to, uh, for listening to us. Uh, hopefully, uh, we have discussed some topics which uh, might be of interest for you. And again, thank you for the panelists for being with me today. Thank you and goodbye.